YouTube. So today is Thursday. It is September 23rd and I just got out from work and I had some good news to bring to y'all and I just could not wait. So y'all know I had a video that I posted about a month ago and I was telling y'all that I had been struggling to balance my personal and professional life. Well, one of the things that I was stressing out about uh, not really struggling with but just stressing out about was that I had to prepare for the soldier of the month board on top of my other duties at work and my personal life so it was kind of becoming overwhelming but it's like the saying goes you know sometimes you just work better under stress and it's for a reason I end up going to the soldier of the month board this past Tuesday which was September 21st and your girl won <laughs> your girl won the soldier of the month board this week Yeah, y'all, so that was very um, exciting. I definitely didn't, you know, of course I have confident, confidence in myself that I was going to do well, you know. Of course, I want to win. I'm very competitive. So when they tell me, oh, you're going up and you're going to be going against other soldiers and, you know, whoever does the best is going to win, of course, I take that to heart. And that's not why I choose to do my best, but I literally try to do my best regardless. That's just how I am. I try to work hard in everything I do and execute whatever task I'm given. When I was told that I had to go up in front of a board of higher ranking sergeants, of course, I don't want to look crazy. I don't want to make nobody I'm representing a little crazy and you know like I said this this is me I'm putting out there and I'm new I'm a new soldier so for me I definitely wanted to take it serious and I did and I came out on top what I'm doing right now y'all is I am about to give y'all the tools and the key so that way you can win at your next soldier of the month board okay because the process of the soldier of the month board is once you win you'll go on to the soldier of the quarter so I had that actually on October 15th and I have to compete with the other soldier of the month. So definitely pray for me on that. If you have any extra tips or anything that I might leave, leave out that you have been there, done that, and you know about it, let me know because, of course, it just doesn't stop at the bottom level. You keep going. So when the soldier of the quarter board, you go to soldier of the year. And, of course, I plan to do my best so that way I can feel like, okay, whatever the outcome is, you did your best. Kudos to you, Kiona. You good. Keep on moving forward. My tips and tricks, um, the six ways to win the Soldier of the Month board. I just did it. I just did it this week. And I know that if you take my advice on this, there's no way you can't be the next soldier to win at your board as well so i am going to just kind of talk about the process how it gets started i'm going to talk about how it went for me specifically i'm going to give you my six tips and then i'm just going to kind of give you uh some sample questions and answers that i actually was given at the board that i remembered that i took notes on so that way i can bring it to y'all as real live questions that i was given that you can possibly get is no way that you might not even get like you're more than likely going to get a question like this or similar and if you don't you know hey at least i'm giving you an idea of what they might ask you so without further ado make sure you like comment share and subscribe and stay tuned for the video let's get started so first thing first kiona how do I even go to the Soldier of the Month board? Okay, glad you asked. You know, like I said, I'm a new soldier. I'm also being introduced to all of these things. So this is how it went for me. I'm not sure how it goes at other bases and other units, but this is how it worked for me. And so I was at PT one morning and our sergeant, my NCO, had gave announcements to everyone. And she stated that a lot of things were coming up in September. And this was the last week of August. She was just like, yeah, we have this and that coming up. Oh, yeah, by the way, we have a board next month. So during the month board and we have selected specialist preload to go. And I'm like, next month? on the 21st and it's the last week of august i think it was like the august the 30th or 28th something like that it was literally the last week of august and i'm like oh my gosh i i don't even have a full month and i gotta prepare for a whole board i don't know none of the regulations by heart i don't know 
this or that. I'm still learning this and that. I'm so new and I'm already so stressed. And then I'm going on leave around that time. I said, oh my God, oh my gosh. You know, I'm saying this in my head. But you know, in the moment, I'm kind of like, oh, okay, you know. I'm like, okay. I take that as a good thing that I was selected to go. I don't know why they chose to go ahead and let me go. Of course, they still don't tell you why you're the one going, but they say, hey, Prelo, you're the next one to go to the Soldier of the Month for it. They told me that, like, so basically, get ready, get prepared, you going. Why Soldier of the Month board? Why not just the promotion board, okay? So from my understanding, the Soldier of the Month board is just to get your face out there so you can go to a board, see how it is, see what type of questions they ask. So that way, when you go to the promotion board, then you'll be much more prepared because you are you've already seen the process and especially if you end up becoming someone like me that actually goes to the soldier of the month board leaves a good impression good first impression as well on the first sergeants master sergeants and just high command sergeant majors then it's like oh wow they should remember you when you go to your promotion board and that way i could honestly just get recommended because now i also can put oh i won Soldier of the Month board for September 2021. And that automatically should look good on my profile, on my record. And then when they see me at the promotion board, they like, dang, you know, we saw Specialist Prelo back in September and she did a wonderful job. Like we already know she's gonna come here and be on her stuff. And as for me, you know, of course, to get promoted, your time and service time and grade matters. And I'm actually not even eligible yet, which is why I was kind of irritated that I was going to the board already because my eligibility date for a specialist to sergeant, I think is 18 months to go to the secondary zone, but literally do not quote me on that exact time frame but i honestly think that's for the secondary zone that way if all of the spots in the primary zone haven't been filled up then i can be next to get promoted to sergeant which i told you they're on me heavy because they're ready for me to become an nco of course all right i gotta go to the soldier of the month board put my face out there i'm not ready to go to the soldier of the month board but it is what it is so the very next day my sergeant sent me uh, an email about all of the well all of the documents and information that i need to send her and what i need to know regarding the board so one of the things your sergeant is going to ask you for is your current erb your weapons card your pt card your bio which is what you're going to actually say when you go to the soldier of the month board which i'm going to say to y'all what i actually said and then if you had your SSD one your um, distributed leader course, which you take if you're becoming a sergeant or whatever course you have to take in order to get promoted, then they'll make sure you have your certificate of completion for that. The bio is a really big part of your Soldier of the Month board because this is your first impression, what comes out of your mouth about yourself. And so basically what you are gonna say in the room, you should basically put that on paper. Basically what I said was, good morning. My name is Keona Prelo. I was, uh, well, I'm 24 years old. I was born in Columbia, South Carolina, but I was raised in Memphis, Tennessee, where I went to Southland High School and graduated at the age of 18 years old. From there, I attended Middle Tennessee State University, where I received my Bachelor's of Science in Psychology with a minor in Mental Health Studies and Criminal Justice Administration in 2019. In August 2020, I shipped off to basic training at Fort Leonard, Missouri, where I was attached to Foxtrot 148 Infantry Battalion. November 2020, I shipped off to Fort Sam Houston, Texas, where I graduated as a 68 X-ray Behavioral Health Specialist. And in March 2021, I shipped off to Fort Bragg, which is my here, my first duty station, I said where I currently work as the NCOIC at my particular clinic. And I also, which you know, of course can give me points because I'm a specialist and I'm doing the NCO, uh, I'm in the NCO's position right now. And of course, what else I said in my bio, I was like, well, some of my day-to-day -day duties are um, maintaining the upkeep and order of the clinic and accountability of military and civilian staff. Of course, you have to tell them your short-term and your long-term long goal. They, they want it to be military center because you're in a military promotion board they want to know why you should be the next nco and keep going to be the next sergeant major so my short-term goal is to become an nco so that my hard work as an ncoic can reflect on my chest and my long-term goal is to enter a master's of social work program so that way i can direct commission over as a behavioral health officer 
that's it. Your bio just only needs to be basically just a little bit about you. I mean, of course, if you got like kids and married and that's important to you, say that. I mean, you can't, they can't take away from that, but they really do want it to just be short and simple. I came from this, I went here, I went here, came from this training, came here, now I'm here. This is what I want to do and this is what I want to do long term. Short, sweet, and simple. Also in the email that my sergeant sent me was the board MOI, which is the memorandum of instruction. She gave me just a, a deadline and a list of dates for all of the boards. And then she sent me some promotion board questions that I can use as my a guide for studying. So I'm gonna actually show y'all that. Well, yeah, this is kind of part of the MOI, but it's kind of just saying like, without y'all seeing, but this, what I should be studying, um, the sections. So basically like the ADPs, ARs, field manuals, training manuals, things like that. And who on the board is gonna be asking me what, which is not true y'all. The same board members weren't even on this board that they have listed. So I would say ignore that if they say, oh this, I mean it might be like that at your unit, the actual um, sergeants listed on the MOI are the ones asking you the questions, but I say don't focus on it because that's honestly not important. Just know whatever they might ask you, whoever might ask it. Um, here's the list of questions that they might ask you and who might ask it. So the actual questions also in the answers. So really it's just getting good y'all at studying what's on here and doing your own research, which I will get into. So yeah, um, getting started, my sergeant gave me my MOI, my promotion board questions. I had to send in, her, send in my information so she can make my counseling packet that she has to bring with us to the board and just getting what we need so that way I can get to the board and get the, you know, the administrative stuff done. So now let's get into my six ways or my six tips or my advice on how to study and these are my main six ways it worked for me you know as a as you see a result of me studying like this i was able to win of course a lot of different factors might go into why i won but i don't know why all i know is this is what i did and i came out the winner first thing first is to start studying your creeds and your songs first now of course all of us Everyone, no matter who you are, you have to know the soldier's creed first. You know, in basic training, that's all, that's for everyone. Soldier's creed, soldier's creed, soldier's creed. Also, in my unit, they were asking everyone for the NCO's creed, not even just specialists or people becoming or trying to become uh, the next rank in sergeant. Everyone was getting asked the NCO creed because I was on a board with PFCs and uh, just lower ranking soldiers as well. And they, I also heard that they were also saying the NCO creed. And don't forget the army song. I almost forgot the army song. That is a main song. You learn it in basic training as well. Know your army song, know what it is called. The, the army goes rolling along. The reason why I said, say this will be of help for you is that Studying something like reciting, something that you just say that should be instinctively ingrained in your mind, is just repetition and memorization. So how I like to remember things by repetitiveness, by repetition, is that I like to write it over and over again. You know how they said in middle, in middle school or like in elementary when we used to get in trouble and have to write stuff down on paper a hundred times and a thousand times? It's because they're trying to get you to ingrain it in your head. Like by the time you get to that 30th sentence, you're going to already know what's right. And on top of that, you need to write it down line by line by line. Until you learn that first line, don't go to that second line. So as many times as you need to write, I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. Just keep writing it until it's ingrained in your head. NCO's Creed. No one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer, a leader of soldiers. Keep writing it down and of course it's a lot of psych psychology behind how we remember things but the biggest thing is repetition 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 and just memorizing it by repetition through repetition and just getting it in your head so that way even if you honestly really don't even know it you didn't say it so many times that it just you your mind in your mouth naturally forms what comes next okay Second tip is to ensure that you are attending mock boards. Now, I don't know how mock boards work at other units and other locations, but in my location, our sergeants just chose to implement 
like mock board sessions for our usual Tuesday trainings that we have after work. Like, you know, we have um, 68 x-ray training and sergeant's time training. They just decided to start implementing it during that time. And remember, we started sergeant's time training in September. So I got a chance to get two mock boards out of the way before going to the board, which is not like full blown mock board. They're just kind of showing you the process and letting us see it. And the next week, which I will talk about in a second, is was my way of implementing further study for us. So the first week they kind of took us through a walkthrough. So they showed us our sergeants, how the board members are set up, you know, who should be on the board. And just kind of talking about the board setup and they actually showed us how to walk in to the board which is you have to be brought in with a sponsor and you have to do a very loud knock on the door like they say like well it's like three times so like they want the board members to hear you and then they'll say enter um the way it worked for me was that my sponsor went in first gave them my counseling packet and she came back out and said hey in three seconds go ahead and knock so you can come in also, they show us how to sit at attention. So when you're at attention in the board, you have to be like this with your heels together, your hands in a fist and on your knee, above your knee, and just like this, and your shoulders back, just sitting at attention. You know sitting at attention and you know sitting at attention. And they go over how to respond to their questions. So the first sergeant might ask you something pretty low. What is the placement on the uniform of the nameplate on a female uniform? And I'll say, first sergeant, I can't reference the place of measurement for the nameplate on the female uniform at this time, but I can reference it, reference it in AR 670-1 uniform wear and appearance. And to them, that's still a solid answer because at least you didn't know the answer to that, but you knew the answer to the regs. And they want to at least know you know where to find the answer because that's normal. We don't know the answer to everything, but if you know the regs, Go find it in the regs. That's not an A answer, but that could be considered a B, C answer. One thing I also want to make sure that you remember that I kind of skipped over is that when you knock on the door, the first thing you have to do when you walk in, of course, you have to march in and you have to report to the president of the board, which whoever it might be, they would have already maybe introduced their, themselves or they will, you know who the president of the board is. And so you'll come up, you'll salute. Specialist Prelo reports to the president of the board as directed. Wait till they drop their salute. Then they'll look at you, trying to make sure your uniform on, on point. And they might just be doing it just to intimidate you, but they're kind of looking at your uniform. They'll be like, left face, take two steps forward, march, something like that. And then they'll finally get you back over so you can take your seat because they want to know if you know your jewel and ceremony. Another thing that you can remember when you are being asked a question and you can't quite understand them, you can always say, hey, first, uh, not hey, no, please don't say hey. You can be like, first sergeant, may you rephrase the question or whoever you're speaking to, sergeant major, may you repeat the statement. Like, it's okay if you didn't hear them. It's okay if you need them to reword it. They should and they don't have to because if it's being asked that way and that's the way it is in the book, then you should just know it. Another thing that I did, y'all, that I really think helped was I told y'all that I had to conduct a sergeant's time training, which was a week before the board, which I was so stressed out, y'all, which I could talk about it in another video, but I was super stressed out. And I had to do it over the nine line medevac form, but at the end of the class, basically the whole training day was up to how I wanted to do it. And at the end of the nine line medevac request, I chose to implement a Jeopardy game that I created with questions and answers from the mock board. And everyone in my section, even if they weren't going to the board, got a chance to play, which was very fun for them, you know, and it allows you to learn in a fun way. Number three, y'all, is to create a Quizlet. So if you are in any type of school, you should know how much of a lifesaver Quizlet is. Of course, Quizlet is just an electronic version of flashcards. If you prefer flashcards, that's fine. I always prefer Quizlet once once I got hit to Quizlet because you can go on there, it gives you ways to learn, it gives you ways to play games on there, and a lot of creative ways to help you learn the information, which I like. I think that you do have to pay maybe $20 for it one time. I don't know. I say whatever it is, it shouldn't be that much. It is worth it. 
And so from creating the Quizlet, my suggestion to you is, is to separate each category into its own Quizlet. So at first I started off putting all of like the questions from here on the Quizlet and when I had like 200 turns and another one was like 100 turns, I'm like, why am I doing it like that? And I just started breaking it down. So I did rifle marksmanship, one category, land nav, one Quizlet, um, uniform wearing appearance, one Quizlet broke all of it down in its own thing so that when I start focusing on one subject area, I can focus on that one subject area and I can keep getting questions, as many questions and answers as I need to because I did use various resources to get my information. So on one half of it, I did use like the board questions that they gave us. On the other end, I did go and get questions and answers from Google that I can find. And another way I'm gonna talk about, which I'm gonna show you in a second, is a promotion board book that you can buy from the military clothing and sales store. So I just basically gathered all the information that I had on one subject and I just put it in one place in the Quizlet category. Number four, y'all, is to buy this amazing book, which the name is very much true, Winning the Board, a guide to success on promotion board, soldier of the month board. And I got this book from my military clothing and sales store. It was $11.99, which of course, you know, I was like, ooh, that's expensive for the book, but it was worth it and I'm happy I chose to buy it because it has a lot of good information in here. I'm gonna try to show y'all like, it has everything broken down by section. Like you see leader development. I'm just gonna go to another random page. So you can kind of see his, what's it say? Military justice. <laughs> it even have, um, it has the medals and stuff in here that you, that go, the awards and stuff that go on a uniform that you can look at. It has where you can put your chain of command on here like your own chain of command. It also like gives you um, just your tips, things like I've just told you at the beginning of the video of how to win a board. This book in some way had more questions and answers and in another way the promotion board questions had more questions and answers. And so all I did y'all, all of it, I mean, in certain sections, it is kind of a lot of stuff and I feel like I've never heard that and I don't think I need to know that now. So I did kind of use discretion on what I might need to add to my quiz so I won't add to put, put too much time into transferring it, but I definitely got all my information and put it together and this book, y'all, was a lot of help and I'm still gonna keep using it as much as I need to. So definitely take that into consideration. Number five, y'all, is to translate the information as needed. So a big way that you can do this, y'all, which is if you're like me, a hands-on person or a visual learner, you have to go and actually see this with your own eyes. So all I did was, if it came to drilling ceremony, I'll go type it in on YouTube. I'll actually go to the actual drilling ceremony um, AR. Uh, well, for drilling ceremony is TC3- 21.5. I'll just kind of go through it, kind of skim over it. I'm like, hmm, I finally see it in the regs. Now I see it in a book, I see it on the promotion board questions, but I finally see it in the actual regulations. Also, what I'll do is I'll go type it in on YouTube. And y'all, I'm gonna put y'all up on game right now because this was a blessing to me. And this is a guy's a first sergeant, a retired first sergeant's channel on YouTube, and his name is Bill Stoker, or I think he also goes by like Stokermatic, and I'm gonna link him in the description box because y'all, his channel was so helpful. I literally loved it. If you see this first sergeant, thank you. We need more people like you in the army as leaders. Thank you so much. Yes, y'all, his channel is amazing. He also breaks down these sections and goes by the book word for word and gives you tips. And you get to also see how first sergeants ask you the questions because he's a retired first sergeant. So definitely check out Bill Stoker. I'm gonna leave him in the description box. Super helpful, love you. And the last tip, y'all, that I can give you on successfully studying for the board is to have someone review you, have someone to quiz you, quiz you on the spot, have some your sergeant, have 
people that you know in the military in general have just a friend to randomly throw you questions that they might already know about military regulations just ask you randomly to keep you on your toes have them actually look at your quizlet and ask you questions from the quizlet i had certain people ask me questions from the book and read it at the book randomly just go to a random page and ask me questions have them listen to you say the creed and look over it as you say it so that way if you forget a sentence and they can be like nope 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 and that way they can correct you as you go so you won't keep going definitely make sure you use these six tips number one learn your creeds and your songs first number two get mock board experience number three create quizlets number four buy the how to win the board book number five translate the material as needed and number six have someone review with you it's not easy but it definitely is a tangible and self-explanatory way to help you get more knowledge and to retain the information y'all now i would like to go over the process of how it actually went for me the day of so like I said, I just went this past Tuesday. Um, soldiers that are gonna be competing in the board should arrive in ASUs by 0745 with your sponsor at the Soldier of the Month board. Your, uh, your sponsor actually does not have to be in ASUs, nor, do, nor does the board members. So they're in their OCPs, which I actually think helps because you don't see all their awards and certifications and how qualified and legit they really are. So now you can kind of just focus on yourself and not dang they airborne dang they ranger like all that stuff so like i said you're gonna be very nervous you're gonna see a lot of other soldiers how many ever is going to the board with you and that's gonna have you nervous because everybody's gonna be looking jazzy everybody's gonna be sharp you know everybody gotta be dressed right dressed and squared away in the uniform so nobody is gonna be looking out of place so everybody's looking good and presentable so you don't know what these people know when we first got in the first sergeant called the company first sergeant called all of us into the room where the board was going to be held and introduced all of the board members to us she said she wanted to get it out of the way she introduced herself as the president of the board and said hey everyone put yourself in alphabetical order as soon as y'all get out of here we're about to start get ready so we're like dang okay okay so i was actually fourth it was actually six people y'all not that many i don't know what's normal but it is so dreadful left board so if people are going every month i don't expect it's gonna be 20 and 30 people when the person before you is about to be done you're waiting on the outside area you can kind of hear them saying things if they're loud and projecting their voice you can kind of hear them through the door which is why i heard the person before me saying their creed the previous people are going to come out and then your your sponsor is going to walk in immediately and present them your counseling packet. I don't know if they say to them, and then they'll come back out and say, hey, they're ready for you. Go ahead and go ahead and knock in three seconds. So you knock, doom, doom, doom. Enter, come in, report to the president of the board. First thing they told me to do, well, they told me they left face, right face, did me some drilling ceremony. And then my sergeant, she said, Soldier's Creed. The Soldier's Creed. I'm an American soldier. I said that. I said, cool. Didn't mess up, didn't mess up. She said, do you know your NCL's creed? I said, yes, first sergeant. <laughs> she said, say it. You know what? The creed of the non-commissioned officers. No one is more professional than I. I'm a non-commissioned officer, leader of soldiers. Y'all, I actually did so good on my NCL creed. I almost at the end in that last paragraph, almost stumbled and I caught myself. And I was like, caught myself and I can tell them, I was like, okay, okay. I can honestly tell y'all, after you get the crease over, because the crease is gonna help you get those jitters out, because all you gotta do is just scream <laughs> and say it like loud and thunderous because you're nervous. Get it out during that moment. Once they ask you those first two questions, well, once they asked me the first two, three questions, I was I was cool. I was relaxing. I did not know the first question he threw at me. I think he did that on purpose because I was like, I don't even remember what that first question was at this moment in time, but it threw me off. I had felt confident in a lot of my answers. Some things I didn't know, some things I did, I knew really well. And some things I was like, uh, I couldn't really get to the answer, but they helped me get to the answer. And that was kind of like, okay. And at the end, they'll say, all right, dismiss. You gotta say your unit's motto. All right, dismiss. And your sponsor stays in. They give them the feedback on you. And when my so, uh, sergeant came out, she's like, you did amazing, you did amazing. She was like, they said they only caught some minor issues, some minor issues, which, you know, of course, threw me off. I'm like, what minor issues they caught? Cause you know, I'm like, dang, they caught some minor issues. But anyway, I know they did. 
but I'm happy they did catch my issues. They did because they are easy fixes, which is they said that when I was marching, I wasn't actually swinging my arms. I kept them by my side, which I probably did because I was nervous. Um, they said when I saluted, I wasn't all the way touching my eyes, which saluting is, is kind of difficult, y'all. I am still learning how to salute probably because you feel like you're doing it right, but if other people are looking at you, you might not be doing it right. My service ribbons, they said it was kind of slightly crooked, but you know, I'm gonna blame somebody else on that because I didn't, I didn't know. My sergeant said they were like, dang, like they were very impressed with, with you. She said they were asking me if this was your first mock board and I was like, well, your first board period. And I was like, no, nah, she went to the two mock boards, you know, that we had for training, but no, nah, she never been to the board. And I was like, dang, okay. And you know, of course I kind of started knowing I did good because there, some people are gonna tell you the shorter the amount of time you're in there that possibly means means that you did well, which of course it doesn't always mean that because you could have just been somebody that, oh my gosh, you was terrible, get out, get out. But I was in there a reasonable amount of time. They didn't, they didn't drown me in questions, but they asked me enough questions to get a good sense of my knowledge and I got in and out. And I can honestly say for the people around me, they were in there a long time. And that makes sense because if you don't know your stuff, then they can keep you in there because they need to get you to some type of good like question and answer so they can really like that okay finally you know something you know so at the end they called us all back in to stand in front of the board members and you know the first sergeant gave her a spiel the president of the board and she was just kind of like yeah everyone did well you know this and that you know the norm congratulating everybody from coming out it doesn't stop here you always can come back she said oh, no matter if everyone did good she said it only can be one winner and she said Gonna be specialist pray low. I said, and I was trying my best not to like get too happy. I was like, cause when you know when you just hear your name after some good like that, like winner is, and I'm just like, I didn't expect it. It was kind of like, dang, you know, dang, that feel, that was a good feeling moment. And she was like, yeah, you know, she was outstanding. She had military bearing. She had confidence, and she was like, you know, she deserved to take it today. So she was like, good luck next time. Specialist Prelo, stand by. At the end, everybody uh, left after she said her speech. And she was like, Prelo, you did, you, she said, Specialist Prelo, you did great. Other board members was like, yeah. They said, you did good. And that was like, con like, congratulations. And the other first time he came and gave me a fist pump. I'm like, oh <laughs> Like, y'all, that felt good. Cause y'all, like I told y'all, I had been stressing so much this past month. And it just felt good that my hard work had became noticed. And so, yeah, that was pretty much it, y'all. I ain't get no picture or nothing. They ain't give me no medal or nothing. They was just like, yo, well, it's time to prepare for the soldier, the quarter board that's next. And they was like, well, lucky for you, or maybe not lucky for you, it's next month because you the last soldier for this quarter. And basically, next month, be ready. I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, I want a little picture for September, but it is what it is. My first sergeant even told me, she was like, and I'm, I ain't gonna be, nah, she said, you know I can't boost you up too much. She said, cause you had somebody, he, he was on your hill. She said, he he was almost there, I'm telling you. She said, he, he was coming for your neck, but you know, basically she like, guess it just wasn't enough. <laughs> that was how the soldier of my boy went for me. Now I want to just kind of give y'all some real live sample questions that I had during the board and I want y'all to just get kind of um, introduced to so that way so if you're a brand new soldier that you are just not coming into the military and you already trying to get the uh, process started to get promoted or if you've been here you're a new soldier you've been in you just still haven't went to a board yet or you're just not getting serious about a board these are some questions that you might want to think about or get your knowledge about and start formulating more questions and answers around these questions that they gave me so I want y'all to start taking notes. And if you know the answers just by me saying it, because some of these things you've been like, Amber, that was easy. You ain't know that. Yeah, some of the easy stuff I didn't know, and some of the hard stuff I probably knew. But who knows if I knew the best answer for this? Because apparently I won. So even the stuff that I'm like, dang, I could have guessed that. I, I should have known it. For whatever reason, I gave the best answers. I presented myself the best for whatever, whatever got me to win the board. I don't know what their reasoning was but like I said I could tell y'all how I answered some of these questions and I'm gonna tell y'all some of the questions that I did not know the answers to and that was self-explanatory so the first one which is rifle and carbine TC 3-22.9 and they asked 
asked me the eight functions, eight functions of the M4 slash M16. At the time, I could not remember all of them, so I did have to let them know that I know them, I just can't say them in order. But if you do not know, that is feeding, chambering, locking, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking. One that I did not get right was the PMI. I never have heard of this actual thing because I never, I didn't even study rifle stuff that much actually, which now I am studying more rifle marksmanship and land nav surgery stuff because I honestly could not remember this stuff from basic and I haven't really had any hands-on experience with it since then. So I honestly didn't touch on it and I'm, I did briefly, but I didn't really imp implement it in my mind like I'm gonna do this go around. And I didn't know preliminary marksmanship instructions that you get before every uh, range day in any training for a rifle marksmanship. So map reading and land navigation, TC3-25.26. He asked me, I didn't know the answer to it, what's resection, which is finding your unknown position by using the back azimuth of two known points. One thing that I did get stumbled on as well, which are... It's so easy, y'all, and I could not think of it at the time. The five major terrain features in the two minor. I don't know why I was thinking about the um, colors of the map, the uh, red, blue, green, white, and I had to start naming vegetation and water and stuff. I don't know, y'all, but yeah. The five major terrain features were hill, ridge, valley, saddle, depression, and the minor are draw, spur, cliff, cut, field. So now you know if you didn't know. But first aid, TC 4-0 2.1, I was asked if your battle buddy breaks their leg during a mission, what do you do? What I said, it was kind of like off the dome because there's different ways you can answer this. And I was just like, okay, locate the team combat medic if known, prepare for um, a medevac, medical evacu evacuation. Until then, prop the soldier with his legs up until then carry um, your ba uh, battle buddy, carry them or use um, whatever litter you have so you can continue the mission until they are medically evacuated. I don't know if that was the right answer, but that's what I said, and I couldn't really find the perfect answer for that, y'all. Six, eight whiskeys and E, F, and Bs and stuff. I'm pretty sure y'all know. Another question they asked me, difference between a hasty and delivered tourniquet. Hasty is two to three inches above large extremity and to control life-threatening hemorrhage and bleeding, and delivered goes on directly and goes after hemorrhage has stopped and hasty tourniquet can't be left on for that long. Next section, promotions and reductions, AR 600-8-19. Your soldier wants to get promoted, how to advise them. And I couldn't find the perfect answer for this either, but what I said was you will check the promotion points worksheet. You will have them, like me, go to the soldier and my board first, go to two military and civilian schools so they'll get points, um, attain the special skills, attain an achievement medal, um, meet time and service time and grade, or check in, you know, check waiver requirements. Ask me, what current event sticks out to you and why? So the current event I chose was the disappearance of Gabby Petito, and I just talked about the fact that it's something that we have to think about because you never really know if anyone is truly safe. You have to know your soldier and know their situation, their circumstances, because last time, everyone checked she was with her significant other and what we learned is that family are the people that keep you safe and those are the people we're supposed to trust but a lot of things during the board are going to be off the dome for training units adp 7-0 they asked me what are the three domains of leader development which a lot of people might not know i knew institutional operational self-development which is just based on based on the education training and experience model abcp ar 600-9 what does the regulation say about taping a soldier of the opposite sex? The regula regulation says that no, you shouldn't unless someone of the same sex is not available. And if the same sex person is not, same sex soldier is not available, then just get any same sex soldier to be in the room while you tape a soldier of the opposite sex. Risk management standards, ATP 5-19. What is the risk delivery assessment worksheet? And I'm gonna actually input the worksheet and that's just about risk, intermediate risk, high risk, and sea burn operations, fail main 3-11.4. What is the masking procedure? Of course, it is seven. Start breathing and close your eyes, don the mask, clear the mask, check the seal of the mask, pull chin straps back, sound the alarm, continue the mission. And I am reading this stuff now, y'all, because I can, but during the time I had to come up with this stuff like off the top. And most of the stuff I did, and I'm just putting what I might have said down. 
And if I didn't put the exact definition, I'm telling you, I didn't know it, so I'm telling you it now. Um, how are auto injectors disposed of, which I didn't know, and this is in the How to Win the Board, uh, win the board book, and you will hook it through the top pocket flap of the protective overgarment, whatever that means, y'all. I didn't know. Total Army Sponsorship Programs, 600-8-8R. General rules for appointing a sponsor, which is the sponsor has to be equal or higher in rank than the soldier coming in. They have to be the same sex. They have to be familiar with the unit and the environment. And of course, other things like marital status, maybe age, you know, things like that they could consider. What form and what does sponsor put on that form, which is a DA-5434. And the sponsor will just put their info, the contact info, chain of command. For the Army Command Policy AR-600-20, who's the first three-year NCO support channel? Of course, easy, my first line, my platoon sergeant, company first sergeant. They might ask you the full line, though, y'all. They might actually go all the way up to Sergeant Major of the Army. They might ask you chain of command all the way up to commander in chief they also ask what is the purpose of the nco support channel of course to support the chain of command who are responsible for implementing the mission and ncos we execute the mission next army leadership and profession adp 6-22 what does stewardship of the army profession mean and that is, I said, you know, because I know what stewardship means, it's just being of service and caring to your um, population. I said to military personnel, to civilian personnel, that's what I said. But the book version I found was duty of all U.S. Army leaders who are entrusted to care for the people, resources, and Army family ensures we remain a trusted profession. So if you say anything on the lines of that, if you know what stewardship means, you can get the answer right. Next, Military Justice, AR-27-10. Your soldier wants to know why his battle buddy received only seven days of extra duty for reckless driving on post, but your soldier received 14 days extra duty. What do you tell them? This is one of the situational questions that they're going to ask you because they are going to ask you a lot of situational questions. And what I said was, well, this is where you'll just explain the difference between a summarized article, article 15 and a company grade article 15. And if you know a company grade article 15 is higher and you can uh, be given the punishment of 14 extra days of uh, 14 extra days of duty or 14 days of restriction, seven days for the of pay. And it's just commander's discretion, which you would tell your soldier. Holistic health and fitness, field manual 7-22. They asked me the 10 prep drills and which two are at moderate count. Of course, I got the 10 prep drills um, right, but y'all, for whatever reason, I didn't know what he meant by a moderate count because I never heard anybody call it a moderate count. I knew that the push up and the high jumper are at a faster count. I just didn't know that they considered the word moderate because moderate to me means medium. Of course, know your preparation drills, bend and reach, rear lunge, high jumper, rower, um, squat bender, windmill, prone row, bend leg, back twist, push up. Also under holistic health and fitness, soldier needs help spiritually, what do you recommend? Of course, you can say something on the line of, oh, recommend chaplain, behavioral health, develop a plan of action with an event uh, counseling, just stating that you refer the soldier because they are having issues spiritually, da da da. Things like that, make sure you notify your NCO. Salutes, honors, courtesy, AR600-25. And it asked me, and actually y'all, I did not go put the proper answer for this and I might insert it. What does soldier do when reciting Pledge of Allegiance indoors versus outdoors? Next, flags, AR840-10. How is the flag hoist, hoisted to half mass and then lowered? Of course, you have to raise it all the way to full staff and then you lower it from half mass. Army programs AR608-1 or 600-81. How soon a soldier, how soon can a soldier start the ETS process? And depending, they didn't really ask me specifically, but I did touch on the fact that it can be within 180 days. But now that I looked it up, I think 180 days is the job search process, but you can start the transition process within 18 months of your ETS day and I think two years if you're retiring. Drill and ceremony TC3-21.5. How to put squat in an extended rectangular formation. Super easy for me, y'all, because I be leading PT sometimes. And that's where you just call extend to lift, march, arms downward, move, lift, face, extend to the lift, 
march, arms downward, move, right, face, even them to the left, uncover, from front to rear, count off, and the last one is similar to the right, march. Very easy. If you do PT, mandatory PT, you notice, you notice. Um, they asked me the interval of steps, what a, you know, and I talked about the 30 inch full step, 15 inch half step. What does cover mean? That's when each element dresses directly behind each other because you're either getting ready to march or you're in a column. They asked me how to space, space each element. I said, you'll call your straight dress and then ready front. And that's just how you, they asked me which way does the right flank turn their head. Sit the uh, furthest right flank, keeps their head straight and the others dress off of the right flank and they turn their head to the right. So first thing first, y'all, I do want to give y'all my last overall tips that will help you succeed in winning on the board. The board members are going to be relaxed. Like I said, I don't know if it was the OCPs, but to be honest, they was in there like this. <laughs> Cause I, you know, they sit on a lot of boards. So to them, they kind of like, whatever, you know your stuff or you don't. And you really pretty much the only person nervous. Another tip, take initiative. Ask anyone for help, y'all. I was asking anybody I could for help. Like I said, family, other soldiers, sergeants, sergeants or military people that you might know that it are not in your unit, have nothing to do with your unit, just people that you might know through family. The thing that I keep telling people in my section that are going to the Soldier of the Month board next is study general knowledge. Like, honestly, if you just study and get the knowledge, you will be way more confident going into the board. Like it only makes sense if you don't know your stuff, you're not gonna go into the board confident. If you know your stuff, there's nothing they can ask you or can't ask you that you honestly cannot give a good, well-rounded answer to. If you know your stuff, you know your stuff. So that's gonna give you your foundation and what you need going in there. So study your general knowledge, what you need to know about the army overall and it's mostly on those the things that you are getting introduced to and basic those main basic level soldiery tasks i don't know if it gets much more harder in the promotion board or if the soldier the board they just kind of want to get a general idea of what you know so they are asking more of those basic level questions but general knowledge could be the key to you winning the board another tip y'all focus on your problem areas and review what you already know you're good at. So if you know that you know everything about rifle marksmanship and land nav, then just, just review it. Like don't spend too much time studying it, especially since I know a lot of people don't get that much time to study for the board. Some people get a week's notice of going to the board. I got four, about four weeks, not even a full month, but you're getting a lot of information, especially when it comes to the army. It's so many regs, so many things to know, so many places that you can start from. So focus on what you know you need help with and review the things you know you're good at. And the last overall tip that I have for you is do not overwhelm yourself and pressure yourself into stressing last minute. And that means these are regular study tips if you know your board is the next day, don't do like me and study all day Monday and be wore out the next day. No. On the day before, you can study a little bit that you know you need to get in your mind. Because I had to because I was on leave um, a few days before. So I had to study that day. But if I wasn't on leave, I would not did that. And the day of, only review. Just kind of glance over stuff. But don't be in there trying to study. Because I'm going to tell y'all right now. The guy that was in there, which is so sad. He was in there trying to learn the last paragraph of his NCO creed in front of everybody. Like his sponsor, his sergeant was in there like, no, no, I will communicate consistently with my soldiers. I, it's not, you would not communicate consistently. Like that was not the time for her to be doing it. And that was not the time for him to be trying to learn the last little bit of the NCO creed. We're literally about to go on the board and you're pressuring him into knowing the rest of it. And he knows he doesn't know it by heart. At that moment in time, he hadn't retained it. There's no way he would have retained it perfectly anyway how she wanted him to so in that moment he needed to just let go and let God and just go in there and wing what he knew he had for sure because I'm pretty sure that was way more pressure on him and he could have just been chilling and had his mind just refreshed and ready to go so he can go in and have a fresh mind getting ready and answer up those questions and I say do not do that y'all do not be like him he did well but just that was one thing I called and I was like mm, no I'm not doing that I'm not doing it. Yeah, my sergeant will ask me a random question and I'll be like, oh, I knew it. But I'm like, no, nah, I don't ask him too many questions. That's not what I'm trying to focus on right now. So, so yes, y'all, that was 
it. I know I kind of ran through those those real life questions that they gave me kind of fast. But I didn't want this video to be super long because I know I do put out long videos because I talk a lot. But I definitely hope that you got the information that you need. I hope this video was helpful. I just hope that you feel more prepared getting ready for the board because like I said, I was stressed out. I was doing me to get ready for the board and now I see that it worked. So now I know to keep doing me because that gave me results. And I just want to share these same results because y'all are my new people now. I'm coming to y'all and I'm talking to y'all and wanting to talk to y'all on a regular. And so I just want everyone that watches my videos that wants the same knowledge, I want to put y'all up on game. And I hope that you are definitely put up on game. If you like this video, if you want to know more, if it's something that you did not understand, if it was other questions that you have for me concerning the board, um, promotion board, time and service, like what's it like being a specialist? What do I think about transitioning to an NCO? Anything y'all, let me know. Leave it in the comment section. Make sure you just do your best, do you. We know that the Army throws us for a loop on a daily, but whatever they give you y'all, just use these tips, use my advice, and I promise you are good. And come back to this video once you did go to your board and let me know how you did. And I will also come to, back to y'all and let y'all know how I did as soldier of the quarter board. So wish me luck. Well, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to my video. And stay tuned for my next video.